Hi, in this video, I just wanted to make a quick comparison of uh, the Model S, the Tesla Model S versus the Model 3 Performance, which is what I've got. So I'm currently sat in a uh, ludicrous mode, ludicrous plus mode, uh, P90D. This is a 2016 model. Um, it's done quite a lot of miles, actually. It's done like 68,000. It's just a loan vehicle that I've got from Tesla while something is being sorted on my Model 3 P. So it was really interesting to me to actually have this car for a few days. Um, I've just found out that I'm getting my car back like tomorrow morning. That's why I'm doing it in the dark. I was hopefully going to do this in the light, but um, even so, it should be okay. But yeah, it's it's fascinating. As soon as I got in this car, I actually hated it, <laughs> which I'm surprised because this car is the one that got me in love with Tesla in the first place when I saw it at a car show. But there's there's a few things of like maybe going from the Model 3 to this car that you're going to notice straight away that you really don't like. So in this video, I'm just going to kind of run through a few of the things that I'm not so keen about with the Model S and give you my opinion about the difference between the Model 3P and this uh, super fast Tesla uh, Model S. So I'm just going to flip the camera around one second. OK, there we go. So in this rough and ready video then. Um, so the first thing I like, I'm going to tell you something I like about the Model S. I do quite like having this dashboard here. Um, it's really handy just to have it right in front of you through the steering wheel. And it's of course, it's it's kind of what we're more used to with a conventional car versus the Model 3, which is just a screen over here. It's not a problem on the Model 3. It's just that when I got into this car and I start using this, I, I quite liked to be able to just kind of look down at the speed where I have done for years and, you know, be able to see what's going on there. So I quite like that. Would have been nice maybe to have had a head up display on the Model 3. Um, that's what a lot of a lot of people thought was going to happen and let me just go even wider here i know i can't go any wider so um the screen this way round. there are some negatives with this i found actually that the light reflects off this screen um worse than on the model 3 so uh you know now and again you'll just see areas of the screen that go a little bit kind of you know, unreadable um now and again just when the sun's shining through the sunroof up there um, the screen this way round means it's no good really for things like Netflix. And in fact, I don't think you've even got Netflix on here. So this is like the latest version of the software. But you've just got a few games and stuff. So it's it's no it's no good from an entertainment point of view because obviously with it being in portrait mode, this screen versus landscape, you know, it's not it's not really made for like the entertainment side of things. Yeah, you've got Spotify and you've got some toys and things. You haven't got the fireplace as well with this uh, this this Model S version of the software. Oh, you do have the fireplace. I lie. I lie. It was just uh, nulled out while I was um, driving. But yeah, so like, the, oh God, here we go. It's going into like full on Barry White mode now. I do love that. You've got to love this sense of humor. Oh God. There we go. So, like, yeah, you've got you've got the usual bits and bobs in the in the toy section. Let's be honest. Once you've shown your mates this, you don't tend to use it again. Now, let's talk about storage with the Model S, because the storage is what really bugged me the second I got in. Like, you've got nothing. You've got some nice, cozy, like, arm holders where you can see it better over there, actually. Where you, can, you rest your arm on there, it's really nice because it's rounded. But underneath, you know, you've just got nowhere to put anything. It's just this silly tray down here. Let me see if I can brighten that up a little bit. No, I can't really brighten it up. Sorry, guys. But look, there is a big tray area down here. And the problem is, is that anything you put in there, despite the rubber lines that go down it, they all, you know, slide about. You know, you haven't got anywhere to put a water bottle, for example, without it banging around all over the place. And then when you get your, you know, your Costa or your Starbucks, depending on how you're in, which way you're inclined, like you put them in here and this is really far back. So you're kind of, you know, doing this to reach your drink properly versus the Model 3 where it's just down here and in a sensible place. And then you kind of lose your armrest if you're having a drink because now you, you've got to be like this. It doesn't work. So you really, you know, it's like one or the other with this car. And the armrest is in a good position, but however, for drinks point of view, for your coffees, which, you know, half the planet has, is just no good at all. 
Um, the actual interior of the car and the size of the car, I feel, is it, it doesn't feel any bigger at all in here, if not a teeny bit smaller than the um, the Model 3, in my opinion. I don't know whether it's a fact, but it's a feeling that I get. You know, my little boy goes in the back there in his car seat. And by the way, car seats in this car are hell on earth because your kid cannot do their own seatbelt up because that seatbelt um, connector down the bottom there is virtually under the seat. And it's a nightmare. If the kid gets in the seat, you have to lift the seat up yourself and put that seatbelt on underneath it. And that's a standard kind of kiddie care car seat. So that's also irritating. The light at the top there that they have access to goes right in their face and is not kind of above them. It's, it's across their eyes, which is really not very good for passengers either. Um, it, this thing rattles when you're driving along. I know it's done a lot of miles and I think it's done pretty well considering it's a lone vehicle and it's done 70,000 miles. And so the interior is actually, you know, not too bad. The leather's not too worn. Y you know, it kind of felt like it's had heavy use. But it does rattle about when you're driving. You can hear something rattling around. I don't like the fact that the dashboard is so freaking high up here compared to a Model 3. Um, the Model 3 is much, much lower down and you can see way more of the bonnet and everything. And so from a passenger point of view, particularly if they're a young you know, child or something or, you know, just somebody who's short, you're just going to be almost eyeball to eyeball with this um, instead of, you know, uh, with the Model 3, you're going to have a great visual area where you can see everything. So that's my take on this car. Um, driving wise, this one is bloody quick. No two ways about it. It is a fast car. I think it's 2.6, not 16, 2.6. Because it's got, uh, let's have a look, driving mode here. It's got ludicrous plus, you know. This is pretty rapid car. And it feels it. Now and again, it wheel spins, mind. Um, never had that on my Model 3 performance. So perhaps there's some differences, you know, the way the software's set up and everything. The Model 3 is much more nimble. You know, it really it really is a very quick kind of go kart like experience. But I would say that, you know, this car does feel a little bit faster on a straight line than perhaps even my Model 3 performance. So which which would um, which would work out with the 0 to 60 times of being, I think, 3.2 for the Model 3 performance and 2.6 for this particular um, this particular setup of the P90D um, with this ludicrous plus. So. But yeah, overall, I'm happy with my Model 3 performance. I wouldn't swap it for this. I do feel it needs updating now. Fantastic a car as it has been for Tesla. I think it's time for a full update and, you know, perhaps an interior that goes a little bit more like the Model 3. So perhaps they're working on that. I'm not quite sure. Um, but that's it. So I'm um, sorry again about the dark. You know, this is the best I could do. I wanted to get this quick uh, opinion to help other people who are deciding between a Tesla Model S and a um, Model 3 in rather than not do it at all. Other thing on this car, you know, I charge it up. The range is about 180 miles, um, you know, on there. Of course, in reality, it probably won't be. So, yeah, not great range on this either compared to my uh, M3P. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. And um, anything you want to know, just comment below and I'll give you my honest opinion about the two cars.